Okay, well, the first thing when I think of workplace stress that I think of it makes my heart go is the thought of my firefighting my, e my firefighting my emails. Why, and I know that's not just me, why is email so stressful? Well, I think the thing is, um, if you think about stress, um, it can be triggered by a perceived loss of control um, and about a loss of predictability. And yeah. if you think about emails, you know, it's something that we don't have, or we perceive that we don't have control about yeah, yeah, over yeah. it. And it's unpredictable, you know, you, you log in and you really don't know what's going to pop into your inbox. Mm -hmm. Plus we're on all the time and we're always checking our um, emails. Yeah. So, so the, the good news about this is really that, you know, with some um, organisation um, and even something very simple like only checking your emails at certain points during the day, you can regain control and you can introduce predictability back into your life. Now, that's a bit of a revelation for me because I am someone uh, that has my emails open pretty much from the moment I get into work until I go. Um, what kind of time frame are you talking about? Well, I think, um, you know, if you put a you know, particular time frame, I think it's something that you need to talk through with your boss what will what will work um, but I, I I received an email from somebody once an email response and and, and on it he said um, I check my emails at 10 a.m. and at 4 p.m. To, in order to serve you better and I, I, I really respected that and I mm. think that's not a bad idea pick two time points during the day that are critical time points um, and check emails but I would suggest not checking your emails until you've got some work done. Don't make it the first thing that you do yeah. in the day. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and certainly don't reach out for your phone when yeah. you're still in bed. <laughs> and so tempting, so yeah. tempting. Again, I know that's not just me. Uh, okay, and um, so what else? So obviously this is really important um, for people that are stressed generally, but why is keeping a lid on um, the stress induced by emails and planning, why is that so important for people well, with migraines? Because stress really is one of the biggest triggers for migraines. So anything that we can do to minimise triggers will also maximise um, our ability to continue working okay. um, and minimise um, the likelihood that we will um, experience migraine. Okay, fantastic. And then what else can we do like at the start of our day in terms of planning that can uh, dampen down this stress? Well. There's there's a there's a lot of things really in in terms of um, uh, the the workspace. Mm -hmm. Should we talk about yeah the yeah yeah let's do that. Um, so um, some very simple things um, like um, even just the distance between you and your screen, making yeah. sure that your screen is at eye level. Okay. Um, making sure that your screen isn't tilted off to one side because if you think about it, if you're you know straining this way or or straining that way, yeah. you know your your muscles will become tense and all those will will trigger in. It's important also to have um, you know make sure that your posture is good um, and that you have a comfortable <laughs> yeah, but, but that you have a comfortable um, seat to sit at. Yeah. Um, and um, this is really interesting um, mm. because this is a this is a standing. Uh, yeah, computer, um, and and I say that's really interesting because, you know, sitting eight hours in front of a computer is a trigger for migraine for people. So ah, okay. it's really important not to sit all day. Yeah. So I would suggest I actually have a little reminder on my phone, and it tells me to get up. Um, and walk around once every hour. Yeah. So something like that is really, really important to do. Um, working sometimes standing um, is, is, is really good and really yeah. positive. So um, I, I heard it said recently that sitting is the new smoking. Smoking will always be the new smoking. It's always bad for your health, always bad for your brain health. <laughs> but we're learning that sitting all day is really just not good for your brain yeah. health and, and can be a trigger for migraine. Yeah. So there's some simple things in terms of how the workspace is looks. Yeah. In terms of dividing up your day. Yes. So that's so that's you know the outside. So what's inside yes. and what you what you have to work on. Um, I think really if we go back to the idea of regaining control. So some okay. simple organisation and some time management. Yeah. So what I do, um, is um, I actually I, I I use Excel, okay. right? So I use it on computer, but you can do this in in a list format with you know. Lovely pen and, 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 and <laughs> paper. Yes, yes, I'm eyeing this lovely pen. Um, but um, so basically, what I do is I, I, I make a list of all the things that I have to do, mm -hmm. and um, 
I code them uh, in terms of importance and in terms of urgency. Yeah. Right. And then I sort them in terms of the most important and the most urgent. So th this gives you a to do list. Um, which has the most urgent and important at the top. Okay. And you can kind of then, if you put a deadline beside that, you can plan out work hmm. for the day and for the week. And actually what you'll find is that some of the less urgent and less important remain at the bottom of the list. And you realize these are things you don't need to do. And yeah. so you can clear out a whole load of things that you've been stressing about because you realize you don't need to do them. Yeah. Um, and a simple thing going back to the email thing is I would suggest that you try and get one thing off your to-do list, at least one thing off your to-do list done before you open your email. Yeah. Because yeah. then you're starting your day with a positive sense of achievement, you've done something before you open um, email. And the control as well, which is especially, I can imagine, important for people who experience migraine to have yes. that sense of control in the office. Yes, because the, this is an interesting thing. It is, um, you know, there's there's physical stressors that can trigger a migraine, flickering lights, you know, certain strong smells, mm. perfumes. Um, but the interesting thing about stress is it, it doesn't matter whether the stressor, the things that stress you, is real or imagined. Yeah. If you perceive something as stressful and feel out of control because of it, that triggers the physiological stress response in your brain anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah you sort of changing your perception about how stressed you are and regaining control over your life can actually reduce um, your stress and therefore minimize your risk of, of having a migraine, which will in turn make you more productive in the workplace. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, just a reminder to everyone that uh, we are taking your questions, so please leave them in the comments below. Um, and now what else is going on here? Is this your lunch? It is. At your desk. It's very great. Oh, come on, it's green. It's, it's a healthy, healthy isn't it? It's, it's, it's super healthy. <laughs> so that's brownie points for this. And, yeah. and no additives and preservatives because yeah. um, they can trigger migraine. Um, but do you eat it at your desk every day? Yes. Okay. And you probably think <laughs> that is going to reduce stress because you get more work done. It, yeah, it's almost like having that bit of it's almost like having that half an hour out of the office, you're like, oh no, I can't have it, I'm just gonna do, I'm just going to do the next thing, there's always a little task I can finish yeah. that seems a worthy of use of my time. To be honest, forget having the, the, the lunch, the working through lunch, we need to go back to that space where we actually have allocated time okay. for, um, for our meals. Um, and actually having, the brain loves regularity, so you should be having your meals at the same time mm -hmm. every day. And you need to be getting up and get outside, you know, a great antidote to stress, and particularly stress in the workplace, is to get outside and breathe in some fresh air and engage with nature. And if, if there's no nature nearby, breathe <laughs> in something to London. here. <laughs> there's beautiful flowers here in the yeah. office. You know, just simple things like that, simple things that kind of give you a sense of balance between, between work um, and play. And I think those are really nice, uh, really nice guidelines to help you and less stress at work. But what's a really simple thing that um, people watching can do that won't take up too much time in their working day when they are feeling like the stress has got a bit too much and they feel a bit uh, anxious or on the edge? Yeah, uh, the thing is, um, the initial stress response um, is unconscious and it happens in a deep part of our brain called the amygdala. And um, you know, it, it, it's great that it does because that's our fight or flight response, you know, and it, it just reacts to a stressor so that we can, you know, fight or flee yeah. um, is, is the terminology. And then a little bit later in the process, our prefrontal cortex kicks in um, and that allows us to appraise the situation. So it's like a mediator. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it, can, it can appraise what's happened. It knows that you know, you've had this stress response, you know, okay. the anxiety and, and you know, yeah. the tension. So it can actually appraise the situation. It can refer back in a sense. It allows us to refer back to other experiences and make judgments. Okay. So appraise the situation and go, okay, this really is so something that I should be stressed about yeah. or no, you know, we need to put some perspective on this. So it actually allows you either stoke up that stress response. Yeah. So say you're down a dark alley, you know, and you hear footsteps or whatever, and allows you run so fast, you know, or it allows you to say, this is something um, that I don't need to be stressed about. I can take a deep breath. Yeah. It also allows physiologically mm. part of your nervous system to dampen down that original stress response. Okay. 
So it actually can bring down your breathing. So with stress, your breathing quickens, your heart rate quickens, yeah. um, and if you do this, then that, that part of your nervous system can just start to calm that down. You can slow down your breath, slow down your heart rate, you have more perspective, Correct. and you can become more grounded in the moment. Fantastic. And being present-mindedness, th th this, this is why mindfulness and being present-minded yeah. are so good, because they, you can keep yourself in the moment um, and, and prevent you from um, getting caught up in negative thoughts yeah. that induce an anxiety, make you more stressed, and then in turn trigger migraines. Trigger migraines. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Okay, wow, that's some really useful advice there. Thank you very much, um, Sabina. Now we're going to go over and check out some of the questions that you sent for us, so let's go.